continue this series on the, the church and the state and in today's teaching we're going to have a look at what God declares in his word with regards to a nation's borders, its boundaries and what we'll see from uh, the passages of scripture that we look at today is that with regards to um, a nation's borders God's sovereignty um, is in full dominance in this area um, with regards to nations itself, um, we've already seen that God is the one who forms nations. And so the sovereignty of God reigns supreme in this area in the earth. Uh, mankind does have its own free will, but God, who is our creator, knows how to influence the decisions that are made by those who are in authority. And so as a result of that, God decides what the borders of a nation will be. Um, and the passage of scripture that we'll open up with today, around today's discussion, is in Acts chapter 17, verse 24 to 26. The scripture says, God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. And so we've really looked at this passage of scripture to uh, verify the fact that God is the one who decides when a nation begins and when a nation in fact comes to an end as well. Um, but the same passage also tells us very clearly that God pre-appoints the boundaries of their dwellings. In other words, what the borders of that nation will be. And so the, the um, world map that we look at today, we see all the borders of the nations in the earth today. And we say, all right, well, those uh, borders came about through wars and through men uh, negotiating with one nation, negotiating with another nation. And thus the boundaries were drawn between the various nations. Um, yes, that did take place in the natural, however, it was influenced in the spirit because God is the one who has preordained and predetermined what those borders will be. Every single nation's borders have already been predetermined by God from the beginning of time. And as I say, on this particular uh, subject, um, the sovereignty of God does reign supreme. He is the one who decides um, what a nation's borders will be. Another passage of scripture we can look at to just reinforce this particular truth to us is in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 2 verses 2 to 5. Scripture says, And the Lord spoke to me, saying, You have skirted this mountain long enough. Turn northward and command the people, saying, You are about to pass through the territory of your brethren, the descendants of Esau, who live in Seir, and they will be afraid of you. Therefore watch yourselves carefully. Do not meddle with them, for I will not give you any of their land, no, not, not so much as one footstep, because I have given Mount Seir to Esau as a possession. And so very clearly, uh, God is instructing Israel, they're um, walking through the wilderness at this point in time, and they're about to go through the nation of Edom. Now, Edom had descended from Esau. Israel had descended from Jacob. Um, and God instructs them. He says, guys, don't even attempt to take any of their land. He says, no, not so much as one footstep will I give to you. Why? Because I've already given it to Esau as a possession. And so God, in, in dealing with his chosen nation, the nation of Israel, would, un, would not allow them to take any land from any nation that he did not preordain that they could do that. And in this case, he said, no, you can't. You can't have anything. I'm not going to give it to you. I've given it to Esau. And so very clearly, God is the one who is deciding in this instance and all instances as to what a nation's boundaries will be. He wouldn't allow Israel to just take whatever they wanted. Uh, God said, you can have what I give you, outside of that you can't have it. And so that same principle God applies to every nation on the, on the planet. And so when a nation's boundaries expand in any way, it is always God that is 
causing that expansion to take place for whatever reason. He does have his reasons behind every uh, change in a nation's boundaries that we see taking place in the earth, be it through wars, be it through negotiations, be it through whatever means. God is always the one behind it and those boundary changes have always been preordained from the beginning of time. Uh, so we're dealing in this uh, section here, we're dealing with the sovereignty of God, we're dealing with God's um, predestination as well. Those are two very important concepts that we need to get our minds around when we come to dealing with these uh, particular topics. Another passage of scripture that once again just highlights this particular truth to us is in 2 Kings chapter 10 verse 31 to 33. Scripture says, But Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord God of Israel with all his heart. For he did not depart from the sins of Jeroboam, who had made Israel sin. In those days the Lord began to cut off parts of Israel. And Hazael conquered them in all the territory of Israel, from the Jordan eastward, all the land of Gilead, Gad, Reuben, and Manasseh, from Arur, which is by the river Arnon, including Gilead and Bashan. And so we see here God now diminishing a nation's borders. Why is that? It's because of sin. God was judging the nation of Israel. And so the, the scripture is very plain. In those days, the Lord began to cut off parts of Israel. How did he do that? He used the king of uh, Assyria to invade Israel, and or Syria I think it was, and to take back uh, territory that used to be part of Israel, and they now became part of uh, Syria under Hazael's kingdom. And so God was now judging Israel. He didn't take out the nation entirely at, its, at the outset. He cut off parts of Israel. So he began his judgment on Israel, and the the process being that Israel would recognize God is now judging them and they would then come to repentance. God would then restore those territories to the nation once again. Um, if you go back in the Old Testament, you have a look at the history of Israel. You will see that that back and forth went uh, throughout the centuries. As Israel came to repentance, God would then add territory back to her. As she fell into sin, God would take territory away from her. And so God used that mechanism of changing her borders as an, uh, an act of judgment. There's very uh, different methods that God uses to judge nations. One of them is to reduce a nation's borders. And so wherever we see a nation in the earth today whose borders are being reduced by whatever means, we can recognize that nation is under judgment by God because God is now cutting off parts of their land um, as a result of their sin against them. And so God uses, as, as I say, this particular mechanism to judge nations. But very clearly from Scripture, we see God is the one who decides what a nation's borders will be. He, he decides if a nation's borders can be expanded, uh, and for whatever reason he does that. And then he also decides when a nation's borders will be contracted, again, um, primarily as a result of the sin of that nation. That's the reason why God does that. But very clearly we see from these passages or passages of Scripture today is that the sovereignty of God reigns supreme in this area. Um, mankind think that they are the ones who are redrawing uh, the map and um, redrawing a nation's boundaries. But at the end of the day, behind the scenes, in the Spirit, God is the one who is guiding that whole process. Um, through whatever means he, he deems necessary, he brings it to pass. And, but he's the one, and he will not allow a nation's borders to be adjusted at all unless he, he gives permission for that to happen. So if God says no, won't happen. Simple as that. We saw that with regards to Israel and, and Edom. God said, I won't give you a one footstep on the land, so don't even try and go there. And so we need to understand that concept if we're to understand how it is that God actually deals with the nations of the earth. We're going to end the teaching on that particular point.